Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Josh, and today I am joined by Marvel Luke. Hey, what's going on, guys? Marvel Will, or the only Will. Yep, <laughs> only one that matters. And Tim, who is on his first podcast. <laughs> how's it going, everyone? Hey, welcome, Tim. Woo! It's good to finally have you on a podcast. Is this your... I'm just happy I get to meet Marvel Will. Is this your first one of the new year? <laughs> uh, Aside yeah, from ever, podcast for... came out yesterday. No, super yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, two yeah, days so ago, this is the this second, the second podcast of the year. So, anyways, you guys might be thinking this is not the Marvelite, this is not the Super Friends, this is definitely not Flix and Chill. So, what is this? And to answer your question, this is the, the discussion, aka the D. Now, you might be also wondering why I say episode twenty, not episode one. So. Way back when, like a few years ago, I think two, three years ago at this point, Hybrid Network decided to go into podcasting. And the first podcast ever made by Hybrid Network was called The Discussion. And that featured Nick um, and two other people, Oscar and Zach. Uh, Oscar and Zach are no longer with Hybrid Network, but Nick still is. Obviously, you guys are pretty familiar with them if you're listening to this. So we thought we'd bring the discussion back. Now, it's going to work a little differently than most podcasts that we have here because we'll have one topic that will be like a regular podcast subject and then the second topic will be a debate subject so we'll <coughs> split ourselves in halves and we'll debate each other so this episode we're debating marvel versus dc 2017 movies um so definitely feel free to engage in the comments below during the debate any debate ideas for future episodes etc etc without further ado let's begin so guys talking about Marvel and DC's 2017 events. I'm most excited for Hydra Cap for Marvel, uh, his event, which is called Secret Empire. And I'm most excited about the Dr. Manhattan kind of DC rebirth event. Uh, what about you guys? Well, Josh, you can't just go and make freaking Captain America a Nazi. Yeah. But I mean, they've been actually pulling it off well, though. Like, I've been reading like the Hydra Cap book. I know. And it's it's really good. It's one it's one of their better books. Which I mean isn't saying much considering considering Marvel's current catalog, but it's still you know it's it's still a compliment. You know, uh, like yeah, I I mean like I've I've only read the first few issues of of the series so far, but it it really does seem like Spencer is doing a pretty deep, solid job at writing. Catalog. Yeah, I've heard it pisses me off. I've heard that his writing is good, but the issue is that people just don't like the idea in general. That's just that's just a consensus. <laughs> just like. It's kind of my feelings with Superior Spider-Man. It was well written, but I hated the idea behind it. And yeah, that's actually thing a really good comparison. Avengers Arena, based on people who read that. Oh God, people yeah, read I Avengers mean, Arena. <laughs> yes, and people apparently said it was well did. written while it was going on, but no one likes the idea. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's see, and that's a bigger that kind of leads to a bigger problem with Marvel and comic books in general is that you know, like a lot of times, you know writers can write really good you know creative stories like like these for example if they get the creative you know freedoms with the characters but then no one wants to really read it because they don't want their characters to kind of change kind of like also replacing characters but i mean like i'm not gonna lie hydro cap i'm really enjoying because he single-handedly kind of saved the civil war event in my eyes a Civil War II event, but also he would have made it, if he was the main event at least, he would have made the Civil War II event go from meh to like a great event. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. And for people that don't know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. if you read the Hydra Cap like solo book, while Secret War, or not Secret Wars, while Civil War II is going on, the tie-in issues have that basically, and they show how he does it, and it's actually really cool, but Captain America, Hydra Cap, basically single-handedly pushed the Civil War II event to happen, and he basically, just like a guy playing chess, put everyone on their select areas on the board, manip manipulated everybody, and it's genius. But, like, he's basically the real supervillain of the event. But because they don't use that narrative, they have the one that Bendis made, and yeah. it's garbage. But yeah. if you follow the Spencer Civil War II basically falling through the eyes and through the book of Hydra Cap, like his title, his solo series. Uh, Civil War II is actually a pretty pretty good event. On it, it's crazy, actually. Well, it's kind of the thing that spun out of it, because Ultimates uh, like, had to... It ended and got a sequel because of Civil War II, yeah. which, like, it, some, it actually pretty seamlessly led into it. And you see Rhodey die at the hands of uh, Thanos and a breakout fight start between Captain Marvel and Black Panther. 
So that's like another yep. like it's weird. The the side titles of Civil War Two actually aren't that bad. They're pretty decently written. Really? Yeah, yeah. They're really yeah, they're the honestly the best parts of Civil War Two. Well, which damn, is it's it, kind of sad. Ultimate's hand, I, I think I it handles Carol a lot better than the main book does, and even still she acts <laughs> like a major bitch. <laughs> Well, like, the Carol book handles Carol a lot better than the the Ventus. Because, like, the Carol book does a good job of showing, like, those gray areas Mm -hmm. with, like, the predictive justice thing Mm -hmm. that support what Carol's doing. But the Civil War main book never shows any of those. They just show extremes. Yeah. And then they don't even flesh out. Like, like, if you've noticed, like, in the Civil War 2, like, main book, at least, every event of predictive justice they showed, most of the time, never even came true. Because there are such extremes... Everyone, you know, freaked out about them and went to such lengths to either ensure it didn't happen or whatever have you that nothing ever happened. But it's like there were a lot of there there was a lot of cases in the side books where those events did happen or the predictive element did actually help. Granted, I know it kind of sounds like I'm supporting Carol and I'm supporting this event. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I hate this event. All I'm saying <laughs> is that Hydra Cap and what Spencer did with his tie in for Civil War Two makes the event a whole lot better if they were to pursue that narrative instead of Bendis' narrative. But, but unfortunately, they did Bendis. But anyways... Um, that would have been cool to see also a, Captain versus Captain, honestly. It yeah. would have, honestly. You know, like, that's what... That's honestly dead to rights what they should have done. Like, they really, like, after that issue came out, which one, I'm surprised they even came out because that basically... It doesn't... I mean, I don't know the right word I'm looking for, but basically that Hydra Cap issue that showed that Hydra Cap was responsible for manipulating everybody, putting everybody in select areas, whatever have you, to ignite that Civil War II fight. He's basically the main villain, and the fact that they actually allowed Spencer to write that was actually kind of surprising because that basically kind of undermines Bendis' story. Yeah, in a way. you can tell, it, um, and I guess because I haven't read the book, but you probably haven't read the ones I'm going to talk about in a sec. Is that um the the side stories actually kind of undermine it and break it because Ultimates broke uh Ultimates and Amazing Spider Man both made massive plot holes in Civil War Two because yeah especially Ultimates yeah because they have America Chavez who can travel dimensions who literally says hey this is what happens if we go through with what you're doing and it's like yeah. a worldwide Holocaust type situation. Yeah, which is why, I mean, like, it makes a lot more sense having Hydra Cap kind of manipulate. I mean, it would have been really cool to have that. And, I mean, he can't, like, like it could have been really great because they could have had it go the way it did and then him just not get caught, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, what about the monster one? Uh, I know, um, Will, you and Luke know a lot more about Monsters Unleashed than I do because I know close to Zill. No, <laughs> isn't that just it. like such a? I, I think it's such an interesting idea, and in, uh, like you know, them doing Monsters Unleashed. Uh, like we don't know everything about it. Um, there's still more information that needs to come out, but I, I, I really like the premise of it. I think it's a good. I feel like it's 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 like a break away from like all of the because there's no way that this thing's gonna be serious. No, you know what I mean. It can't be. Like, I mean, it, it can't. It, it really it, it, it can't take yeah. itself seriously, so it's not gonna have. I don't think like, you know. I think it's more. It's gonna be more blockbustery than than have actual like. I'm not saying that it's not gonna be good. I'm just saying you know it's it's gonna be different. Uh, it's gonna be more bombastic and a little more out there than like you know like the recent ones like Civil War, Secret <coughs> War, things like that have been coming out. We're like really serious story story events i just feel like monsters unleashed is probably going to be like a really action-packed campy like and and honestly that's what i want from marvel right now because i'm i'm, I'm getting a little sick of things like civil war 2 so what's the general yeah, synopsis it. of it i'm looking at i'm clarify. looking at the marvel page and uh i have to <clears throat> before i can actually see if i can find the little summary it says it they're gotten list five of the most talented artists in comics Adam Kubert, Salvador LaRocca, Stephen McNiven, Lionel Yu, and Greg Land. No. One of the most talented artists, Greg Land. That Those two, no. That shouldn't even be in the same paragraph or page. At least Liefeld's not on there. Liefeld is better than Greg Land. Hey, uh, yeah. hey, oh, hey. Well. Let's, let's, just, um, let's just not entertain that. So, <laughs> that's... 
That's a. I'm gonna do a side by side later of those two artists to actually determine which one's better. Than the Please other. do. <laughs> Please. And oh then do God. a side by side um, of Greg Land to himself, and then make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Greg Land next to all the pictures he stole. <laughs> Tim, Tim the, the Tim the Savage. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, Tim the Savage. Uh, so yeah, but DC though has some events coming out, and honestly, I'm excited for these because they have a Batman event that's going to be helmed by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo is supposedly coming back to do the art for it. So I'm pretty excited for it. Obviously, a lot of people consider their run on Batman like one of the best modern day runs on Batman. That's debatable, obviously, because everyone has their own opinion. But I'm just saying what I hear a lot of people say because, I mean, most people like you know their run. But Dr. Manhattan also has an event coming with DC Rebirth, and it's basically the main DC Rebirth event. Now, I'm really, I'm kind of curious on how they're going to pursue this because there's some people that are saying Dr. Manhattan made like the whole new multiverse. Others are saying Dr. Manhattan simply used what happened during Flashpoint as like a means to like screw with the timeline. So like all the Flashpoint stuff happened, but when Flash was merging those three universes together to make like the new 52 universe, Dr. Manhattan used that as like a weak point to kind of mess with the multiverse so like that's another way so i just want them to really flat out say exactly what dr manhattan did Mm -hmm. because they're they've been pretty coy with it you know they're like oh he takes 10 years out but it's like one that makes no sense when you really try thinking about it even in comic book terms you know what i mean like you took 10 years like like what but i mean what's your guys feelings like what event are you excited for on the dc side because honestly i just I'm really curious on what they're going to do because no offense to Dr. Manhattan, but he's powerful, but he's not all that powerful. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he was still like in the weird Watchmen universe they had, which was like, I don't even know what, I mean, it's like a weird Nixon kind of era. If I remember like Nixon era, Reagan kind of weird era, yeah. but they even said, you know, if they launched all of the nukes, you know, Dr. Manhattan couldn't stop all of them. Nope. So, and there's a lot of characters in the DC universe that could stop all those nukes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, hypothetically speaking. So, I'm curious on how they're going to make Dr. Manhattan such a threat to all the DC, you know, universe. And not just, like, obviously, you know, the Suicide Squad or, you know, you know your average I think, Joe. Oh, wait. You, isn't you know that... what I, I honestly think they're going to do? I think they're just going to reboot the character and they're going to they're, they're going to strengthen him you know like than what he originally was yeah. well i heard a theory that i really liked and you know how they're doing the this current like miniseries is captain adam yeah it's like the rise and fall <clears throat> so i heard a theory that it's going <clears> to <throat> end with like captain captain adam basically becoming um basically what? becoming the oh new doc- i did like, i did hear about like, that he will what? become like the host body of dr manhattan and it kind of makes sense and it'll be a cool nod because he's Dr. Manhattan's based off of Captain Adam. But, like, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I want to know, like, how they're merging the two universes together. I mean, didn't they didn't they exactly. just didn't they just pull all the Superman in? Because uh isn't there a new Justice League event coming yeah, out? Yeah, Justice League versus DC? Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, there that's is. what I was gonna I mean that's what I was gonna ask. I just see, I, I was really hoping in one of these one of these big JL events that we were gonna get some answers because it's been a while. Well, they're doing you know? something really interesting. They're like Justice League's so it looks like Justice League versus Suicide Squad isn't even Justice League versus Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah, because it's not a fair Justice fight. League. And well, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. But it also looks like it's just the teams, like those those two teams are going to team up, and they're going to fight against Maxwell right. Lord and yeah. his like team. Oh, so but it looks like Maxwell Lord remembers everything that happened. Which someone made a funny joke the other day. They were like, "Well, hopefully Superman doesn't let Wonder Woman, you know, meet him again." Um. <laughs> You know, because of what happened last time. But it's like, I don't know, guys. I'm I'm curious, but I'm also a little worried. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like mm-hmm. they may have done the Dr. Manhattan thing because it looks nice and, it you know, it's, it's kind of hyped, you know, so to speak. Like, everyone's really excited because it's Watchmen. But at the same time, it's like when you really think about Watchmen. They're going to change so like, much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to, you know, especially if, you know, Mr. Oz, Dr. Oz, whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. I can't remember here's, exactly, but or, here's what I uh, think like like best case scenario that they do because like it, it's inevitable they're gonna change characters uh 
they're going to change their psychology, their motivations, and their backstories. I mean, that that's just pretty much a given. But I think, like, the best scenario that you could come out with is, like, the original Watchmen, the Watchmen that, you know, we all grew up reading. That's its own universe. And, you know, this could have came out of the wake of, uh, what was that event that led into Rebirth? Well, you mean Dark Side War? Because that's how uh, yeah, they was Dark Side Wally War, came it? back. Because they said when yeah. Dark Side died, it like weakened the multiverse. <laughs> exactly. And so that's so hilarious. I'm, I'm thinking that this, I'm thinking that this Watchmen that we're getting in the the you know the mainstream DC universe, I think it's just going to be another universe, like like all together. I don't think it's going to be the universe, the the Watchmen universe. It's just going to be an Elseworld Watchmen universe. Well, we'll I mean, that'd be cool. I think it's going to be the it. real one. Yeah, cut. Well, you really yeah, think so? Yeah. About this, you don't uh, think it's just going to be like a version of them? No, because no, because no, they don't care because they own that property. Same way they pulled in uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman and all his creations. Yeah. Well, Tim, you oh, had the, something. Those are all in the DC yeah, universe yeah. now. Yeah. I what think I was so. going to yeah. say is, uh, we talked about this on Super Friends the other day. Um, <clears> when, <throat> that Jeff Johns is coming back to write a Watchmen series, so it's likely that most of the answers to the connections are going to show up there, and it may end up leading into the larger event. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of see it as Dr. Manhattan in the Watchmen universe. There's there's probably a derivative of that universe in the oh. DC multiverse, like the current one, but yeah. the, the actual Watchmen universe probably exists in a multiverse outside of the main DC multiverse. That makes sense. So within the yeah. Omniverse, and maybe I'll make a video explaining the whole like DC Omniverse bullshit, but because it's ridiculous how convoluted it is for no reason. But anyways... I'm kind um, of with yeah, Will I that feel I like, feel like their intention was uh, for this to be the actual Watchmen and not a derivative of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I definitely think so because there's no other reason that they would be pushing like, you know, the Watchmen's the, like the button, you know? If the you know comedian's button like yeah well then at that, at that point else. at that point it's worst case scenario if they're if they're because because to be like completely honest with you the, the this entire idea of merging those universes together is sketchy enough as it is like them actually doing like screwing with that continuity the one that we all grew up reading the one that i i find to be one of the best comic books out there i i just like I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I'm, I just kind—I kind of want to know your guys' opinions. I'm gonna tell you right now. If here's the, what they're probably gonna do, if it's not are, what are we gonna are we gonna if it's not well received, they're gonna backpedal and then say it, it was an Elseworld version of the Watchmen. And that's that's pretty much all what the New Fifty Two was. That's and that's all you can we, really hope for is that it's also it, what Rebirth <laughs> is in kind of a nutshell. The soft, well, to, to be fair, Re Rebirth is is has been written a lot better so far than the New Fifty Two ever was. That's yeah. that's very true. true. But it's also a lot of it's because it's like the anti, you know, Marvel now. And I mean, this was a huge yep. criticism of Marvel now is the fact that like, you know, Marvel now isn't really embracing legacies that have been built. And, like, you know, they're not really using characters that have already been made. They're going out of their way of making new characters. And they're ignoring previous continuity a lot of times when they <laughs> do know, that. And yada, yeah. yada. But, I, I mean, like, it's nice. It's nice, like, you know, like, the, the, it's really interesting. But, I mean, I don't want to go too much more in depth about it because we're not the Super Friends or Marvelite podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and where, where we'll just be on one topic for 20 minutes. Yep. Exactly. Well, I mean, like, I don't want to focus too much on, like, you know, you know, those two to, things, because we still have the debate part to get to, I, which I, I have a feeling yeah. is going to take a nice chunk of change oh, yeah. in regards to minutes. But um, absolutely. Basically, to wrap this up before we get to the debate part. So between the Marvel events and the DC events that we know of currently, at least that are coming out soon, which one are you guys most excited, most excited for while talking with you guys? I kind of went from the Dr. Manhattan event to the Hydra Cap event. That was mostly just because I kept thinking about how well written the Hydra Cap stories have been so far. Uh, but 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 the premise is you know kind of shit. Well, um, I mean it's well it's it's I, I'm, it's kind of like Superior Spider Man. So it's like yeah, like we know yeah. he'll be reverted back eventually. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time. So I'm just kind of at this point That's just what enjoying I'm, the ride. I'll give it a year the, at the, the most. The Doctor Manhattan event. The, I'm see like I have that same concern with the with the whole Watchmen event crossover with the dc universe because it, it it sounds okay like let's say it is like well written i'm scared that it's gonna be you know 
it's going to have a shitty premise and they're just going to change everything. And like that one concerns me. So I'm cautiously interested in it. And I really hope that they don't screw things up with rebirth because so far they have a lot, a lot of good things going for them at the moment. Hey, look, man, it can be well-written and you still hate it. I don't like superior Spider-Man at all, but it was well-written. It's a well-written yeah. story and the character is interesting. I still just hate the concept. Well, Will, what event do you... Between you know, the Marvel and DC events, which one are you looking forward to the most? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. I'm really looking forward to... I am looking forward to the Hydra Cap um, and the Monsters on the I'll, I'm, in, I'll, I'm interested to hear the news that will come out from it and see how people react. I mean, Batman things just revolver books and whatnot happen to them all the time so i maybe i am a little curious to see where the event goes but right now i don't know i need to put more dc books in my repertoire i just haven't taken the time because i read a shitload of marvel mm, like well yeah because you're marvel will yeah but get, get dc the will for the dc stuff i guess getting to dc like takes a minute because i have to get through all my marvel and i'm like oh now i can read this issue of supergirl and catch up on Superwoman, and maybe I'll go read Teen Titans or something. <laughs> like, like by the time I get to DC, I'm like, I don't feel like reading anymore. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you get shafted. <laughs> How about you, Tim? I guess for me, out of all of them, like the Doctor Manhattan one, like sounds interesting just to get answers for that. But probably out of all of them, Monsters Unleashed, save for Greg Land's involvement. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. That's so, funny. That's so funny. That's true. I'm going to have to look that up later. Jeez. I'm, I'm going to compare that art. Okay, so now we get to the, the really interesting part. Like, I'm I'm really interested in seeing how this goes as the first time doing it. But hopefully a lot of people listening to this are still listening to it. Hopefully we didn't drive them off. I, so, and I'm, I'm just like, I can't believe we're getting this down because it can go very sideways or it can go like, you know, pretty straight forward we got our marvel movie side with will and luke which is basically Obviously. the marvel light yep uh Obviously. and then tim and myself are gonna take the dc side so if you don't know what this is we're gonna debate each other <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man i know right I, I, have, I have hope it's, it's gonna be a that bold was... new direction for me <laughs> the, the know, d it stands for true. hope for the dceu <laughs> we uh this was, the, this was the driest the transition ever. Uh, so basically, uh, really quickly, to go over the Marvel and DC side, and the visual on the screen will change to reflect to reflect the debate part so you guys can know like the stuff we're saying and the points. Uh, because we're going to debate, but when we conclude our debates, we're going to have to have points, you know? Um, like our points, so to speak, for the debate. And then hopefully the people in the comments will decide who had better better points and who wins. But on the Marvel side, you guys kind of have an advantage because you have an extra movie. But it's Thor Ragnarok, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. On the DC side, Tim and I only have Wonder Woman and Justice League. So, kind of off-balance by the the quantity, but hopefully our quality... Should we take out Spider-Man? Because then... Then you can kind of compare the mystical films with the uh, Well, you can't really... You can't you can't really take them out because it's a part of the Marvel MCU 2017 slate. I tried to give you an out on this one, and you didn't take we it. We don't we don't we don't need an out. You're gonna need all the help you can get because me and you don't understand. I'm a master debater. Me and CJ have debated multiple times. Oh yeah. And Tim is a he master, master debater. debates all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And Tim Tim you don't has know. The, the Tim has the com the. You don't know the women I talk to. (laughs) They run debate teams. Josh is single. Yeah, you don't know the girls I talk to, bro. They run debate teams. Oh, God. All right, so... (laughs) Well, I mean, talking to girls is like a debate anyways. Let's be honest. (laughs) All my friends are girls. I'm not not legally allowed to answer that. I'm telling. All right. (laughs) So, let's get into this. I really didn't appreciate that microaggression, bro. Oh, God. Microaggression. All right, PC principal. So, let's get this started. Um, <laughs> Will, I'll let you and Luke go first uh, before me. Oh and no, Tim no, do our no, rebuttals. no, no! Please, please. You want us please, to go first? Yeah, go God, ahead, I man. I want to hear. I want to hear what your argument could possibly. I talked be all about this on Tuesday, anyway. So, 
All right, so... <laughs> so have we set the parameters of the debate? Like what, like point we're debating besides the movies themselves? So we're de- no, Tim. So basically, we talk and we go. the the general crux okay. of it is we're debating which movies or which studio between Warner Brothers slash DC and Marvel, obviously, which studio will have a better year? That is what we're debating. Oh, are we mm. talking critically and financially both? You can you can put both in there. But that has to be okay. that has to be what your point goes back to is you have to support why your studio will have a better year. Okay. okay. So me and Tim go first. Uh, Tim, I'll take point on this. So yeah. with one Roman, we definitely have a lot of potential with this. I mean, there's obviously been a lot of, you know, negative kind of criticisms before the movie's even been released, which is kind of ridiculous because like I said, the movie hasn't been released yet. But put that aside, I mean, we have Wonder Woman, which has, you know, the trailers are looking pretty good so far. And I know you can't really say too much about that because that's kind of the trailer's job. But it's also worth knowing the cinematography looks fantastic for this movie. I really do think that Patty Jenkins is going to hit it out of the park somewhat with Wonder Woman. It may not be a grand slam, but I definitely think it will be a triple and possibly a home run if you want to use the kind of like baseball kind of uh, verbiage here. With that also being said, I think Wonder Woman, unlike Batman v Superman and unlike Man of Steel, it has a lot of flexibility because it's a prequel. So they're not really tied to do kind of continuity-wise what Man of Steel and what Batman v Superman has done before them release-wise. And I think that kind of creative freedom is going to allow for a much better receptive recepted movie or a lot more well-receptive movie, I guess you should, I should say. Than the previous DC movies that have come out, just due to the fact that it's not bound by kind of that creative strangle that Zack Snyder had on both of those previous films. With Justice League, I think Zack Snyder had a huge kind of waking up moment with Batman v Superman, and I think when I when I say that, I mean, you know, with Man of Steel, it was kind of a warm reception. You know, a lot of people were very vocal that when they didn't like it, but there was also a lot of people that did like it. However, Batman v Superman was very much the opposite. A lot of people didn't like it, and a lot of people did not give it a warm reception. And people were very, you know, kind of vocal about that. So, you know, with that being said, I think before I pass it on to Tim to kind of give his part, I think that, you know, Justice League has a, has the makings of a really solid movie. I, I think people are going to be really excited to see it. Wonder Woman obviously will be the first female superhero movie live action wise we've gotten in a very long time. Because uh, I know there has been ones in the past. I mean, some people consider Resident Evil, for example, to be a superhero movie. So, but this is Wonder Woman. She's the most popular female superhero on Earth. So I feel like that's going to speak volumes for the box office, speak volumes for not maybe not the box office, but for, you know, the reception, especially in the current climate we live in. Uh, you know, having a Wonder Woman movie is you know, kind of gives you an edge, if you know what I mean. Uh, and then Justice League, I feel like a lot of people are going to come out to watch it because a lot of people know who the Justice League is. Very similar to when the Avengers movie came out, a lot of people came to see it. Except for I think the difference is be- is that Justice League has had a lot of media in the past that has been very well recepted. I mean, Justice League action is being re- received well right now, but Justice League, the cartoon and its sequel, Justice League Unlimited, were also very well received by people. And I feel like that audience especially will come see the movie just based on name value alone because they want to see their favorite characters together in a live screen format, a live action format versus how Avengers, instead of using the name to really push the kind of movies or that movie, I guess, they really use the build up to push the movie. So that's my uh, introductory introductory piece mm-hmm. on that. Did my best as I could. Uh, Tim support me right. please damn you like to talk josh <laughs> so the, i guess uh if i can't I beat you with my points, points i'll beat you with time <laughs> luke i'm gonna have to be you when it gets to us <laughs> all right so yeah uh i guess on my point for that uh even with the mixed reception that pretty much all of dc's uh dcu films have gotten so far man of steel getting the best reception both critically and uh from fandom uh, they still do financially well, like, maybe not as well as the studio would want them to do, but, like, Batman v Superman, despite having a 26%, still has, 
is still the sixth highest grossing film of the year worldwide. So, uh, Captain America Civil War also had the benefit of being the sequel, to, which is the highest grossing film of the year worldwide, had the benefit of uh, being a sequel to a movie that was well received by people, as well as having all the Avengers characters who were already well received in that, whereas DC, what, uh, that was only their second film that they've released so far. And people are still willing to go see these films multiple times regardless of what people are saying about them and trying to find more in them, which will help increase the amount that they can make off of this. Especially, in some cases, being backlash to all the negative reception that the previous three films have gotten. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, alright. So who on right. the Marvel side hmm. wants to go first? Oh, hmm. I can start us off. So go for it Willard. i can i can josh us out here all right so <laughs> when we're talking <laughs> from a financial perspective the mcu is already the highest grossing film franchise of all time now they've acquired spider-man with their contract with sony which is the eighth highest grossing film franchise of all time the dceu sits at number 22 so <laughs> It so only finan- has three movies, Will. Only has, well, two, technically, that are out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have three. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, Suicide Squad is right. <laughs> yeah. The, the, DC, oh the DCEU has three films, and Spider-Man alone, with six, has them beat by almost $2 billion. And the thing is, <laughs> yep. d- despite Wonder Woman possibly being being able to pull in a little <laughs> bit of the diversity market with the Amazons and a little bit of the female demographic with it being a modern female-led superhero film in the first place, the last time we saw a DC-led uh, film with a superheroine at the helm, it was Catwoman, and it flopped. And the other Supergirl, which flopped. There's a history of flopping female-led movies, specifically from DC Comics in general. Spider-Man... Even with a Tasm two, even with Spider Man three, the reception, the lowest reception it got was like sixty eight percent. That's still a D, a high D that hasn't hit F range yet. And even though Thor Ragnarok is probably the weak link in this, people still love Chris Hemsworth because they think he's hot. That'll put the all the women's butts in seats that we need, at least all the straight women. Yeah. Well, I I, I wasn't even yeah like like the for Thor uh, specifically. I just have like a really good feeling about this film. Um, I know that I, I flip flop on that in the past, but I for for a lot of reasons because I it's like I said like I don't know like ten episodes ago. I think that Thor Ragnarok is going to be the most lore heavy MCU film that we've gotten. Mm-hmm. Um, multiple reasons we're getting uh, we're getting the Eternals, we're getting Hela, so I assume that I assume that we're going to see Hell. Um, we're getting Surtur the Fire Demon. We're getting the we're getting a Planet Hulk story arc. We have like the Grandmaster. We have Fenris the Wolf. Um, we have Scourge the Executioner. No, I don't think we got word on. Uh, oh no, she's not going to be in it. I don't think um, Amora. I don't think she's. Well, we got Valkyrie. She's not. No, uh, and that's a big no. downside to you. Negative points on yeah. your side. <laughs> actually, yeah, I, I actually will say that it is a downside because I've wanted to see her um, in a Thor film since the first one. Um, yeah, but we are getting Valkyrie. Um, I, th- there's just a lot of, a lot of lore, uh, you know, to be had. And I, I think that Chris Hemsworth is going to go out with with the bang on this, and especially the director. Um, the director comes from a comedic background. I mean, you look at uh, the Russos came from a com- comedic background as well, and look what they pulled off with their two movies so far. And the thing, um, oh my bad. No, no, I'm I'm saying like you already made your point on Spider Man. Plus, I was going to say. We got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah. This is, so far, as far as statistics go, this is the number one anticipated uh, blockbuster summer movie uh, th- uh, this year so far. It's the most anticipated. Um, you're seeing the return of, like, these... these cl- because, like, Guardians of the Galaxy was an instant classic uh, hit in Hollywood. And you we're, we're seeing the return of that. And honestly, from the trailers, it looks even better than the first one. And the first one was amazing. Uh, what James Gunn was able to pull off with that. So, I, I, I don't know. Uh, where were you going with? Well, that I was going to say that. Um, no, kinda, sorry, yeah, Guardian. You already said your piece. <laughs> I'm intervening. <Fine. laughs> I'm living, living tribunaling the fuck out of you right now. The living tribunal oh, is shit, dead. <laughs> no, they made a new one, man. Come on, fam. Anyway. <laughs> I saw it die. <laughs> it's even more tribunally than before. <laughs> 
All right, so I think – all right, so let's get our points across um, before we get back into rebuttals and whatnot because we're about to get sidetracked uh, debating this. <laughs> I can already tell. Um, Hell yeah. Which I mean is natural because it's the first one. So, I mean, I'm not really being that rigid here with them. I'm just kind of letting it free flow. But I mean, like, okay, okay. do you want us to come up with, like, points again? Because, like, you guys did say a lot of stuff about, about DC. We did, we did, and, we like, did. But now is the time where I, I, like, we – well, basically, so the point is to say why, obviously, our movie or our movies will, like, you know, our studio will do, you know, the best af- off of it, you know? And you mentioned yeah. financially and critically. So, with that being said, I mean, for the DC side, because obviously I have to keep supporting the DC side, I got to say, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is going to do a solid job in the box office, I'm sure. Spider Man will do a phenomenal job in the box office. Maybe. Thor Ragnarok will do a good job in the box office also. Now, the reason why I'm saying that, I'm not saying all three of them are going to be, you know, home runs out of the park, is because Guardians of the Galaxy was obviously a huge surprise. I don't think anyone can say otherwise. And I'm, yeah. ex- I mean, me personally, I'm not going to lie. I am. It's probably, it's probably going to make the most money out of Spider Man. Exactly. And, well, I think Spider Man. I think Spider Man will beat it. You think I think, so? think Spider Man make more money, but Sp- yeah, Spider Man will make more money. I'm not talking critical reception. I just mean financially, it'll yeah. be better. I think that Guardians of the Galaxy, it won't break a billion for sure, but I think definitely will get like the 700, 800 million kind of range. Spider Man might break a billion. See, see, and and that's what I was gonna say about DC. Uh, I I think that Justice League will be better critically and financially. Yes. I'm actually I don't bank on it to be too critically. Uh, like high, like I don't think it's gonna get a much higher rating than what Batman v Superman got. On, like to be completely honest, I think with you. I think I Wonder think Woman will. Ju- Justice League. Well, I I think I think Wonder Woman probably looks like their it looks like their best film that they made. So yeah. Far. Justice League, on the other hand, I think that, that that film does have the potential to reach the one billion mark, but I still don't think it's going to make more money. Uh, than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume well, Two. Th- I, I I honestly don't think it's gonna make. And honestly, well, well, sorry to cut you off there. No, so, go ahead. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna say my piece on it really quick. Yeah. Then Luke, I'll hand it to you to rebut that if you want. Then Tim, okay. it'll, it'll go back to you. You can do your kind of rebuttal slash statement, right. and then Will will go to you. All right. Before we really like not wrap it up, but I mean like before we really kind of more or less wrap it up. Um, and then if you guys want to, yeah. always wrap I'm, it up. Yeah, always, always wrap it up. But I'm getting the feeling kind of that, you know, while we debate each other, we also want to discuss it, obviously. Well, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I obviously want to give proper time to do that because this is the first episode, you know, with the discussion being back. So like I said before, I'm being pretty flexible with how it's, you know, how it is because uh, I want to see how people yeah. listening to it, you know, would like to see it also. Um, but yeah, so – Basically, the reason why I think DC movies, and I'll just speak purely financially speaking at the moment, because that's what Warner Brothers is going to look at first. And that's what people, when they make their YouTube videos and their news articles, they're going to be like, oh, it made this much in the box office. It was success. It was better than this other movie because of how much it made. Like at the end of the day, that's what people are looking at. Not only, you know, was it well received, unfortunately, even though reception obviously is very important. But for Thor Ragnarok, I'm sure it will make good money because, you know, Chris Hemsworth, a lot of ladies like Chris Hemsworth and everyone like, you know, everyone's grown to really like the Hulk and all that stuff. But let's also not fool ourselves. Thor has been one of the poorest performing MCU movies that they've had. And I I don't know. And I don't know if Thor Ragnarok and, you know, this it's really sad because Thor Ragnarok has the meanings of you know a really epic film for the mcu but luke i'll remind you of what you you know said very early on when they first announced this movie when you were really excited for it then you got very unexcited about it for a while when they actually started announcing details about the movie because and marvel's had a knack of doing this and i'll call out marvel for doing it even though i've preferred the marvel films so far more so than the dceu films but they have a knack of falsely titling their movies and by that, I mean they name it off of a famous comic event or a famous comic storyline. They subtitle the films. And this has been more of a recent thing more than anything else. But they do that. 
and then the movie has really maybe five percent you know similarity i mean civil war is the biggest culprit of it because it was totally different for the for a good reason thankfully but it was totally yeah, different of that civil war sucks so why would you want it to be the same yeah, thank yeah, exactly. God. But i mean it was totally different you know movie to comic book and i feel like thor ragnarok's gonna be the same thing and mm-hmm. eventually that might have set some fans you know comic fans that are looking forward to that you know arc being interpreted on well, screen but i feel like thor just due to the fact that it's never been a huge kind of star power movie for the mcu i feel like that's the biggest thing not going for it um <coughs> even though well well look at it this way he he makes money without yes. a doubt uh you, you know he he doesn't make as much money as guardians or iron man that's for yes. sure um well, technically but... thor the dark world made more than iron man one and two <laughs> Tim, uh, you are on the DC side. Life is Tim. funny that way, isn't it? <laughs> I just want the information to be accurate so we don't get yelled at. God damn. All right. So, anyways, here I'll wrap it up so Luke can go. So yeah. So Thor, I think will do the third most financially speaking for the Marvel movies. Spider-Man: Homecoming, I think will do the second amount. But I feel like we may see some fatigue from viewers with Spider-Man, uh, mostly because. That's actually you a know, concern of mine. We've had a lot of Spider movies since, you know, the two thousands started. Obviously we've had a lot since basically most of them have come out since two thousand started. Going into but, number six. Yeah, exactly. Six amazing, time the charm. Amazing Spider Man, <laughs> the franchise, I mean, it was not too long ago. I think twenty fourteen was when the last one was released. Mm-hmm. And that's the same time as Captain America Winter Soldier. So I mean like same it's crazy. Months, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I don't know if it was the same month, but it was definitely the same kind of summer movie period. But my basic point being is that, I mean, I feel like we might see some fatigue, and obviously that will reflect in the box office, not counting the fact, obviously, that a lot of people were very skeptical on the movie due to its cast, and also the fact that, I mean, a lot of people, even though everything's been saying that El Mayembe was wrong with his whole Zendaya's playing MJ, even though that's, you know... That happened, and that left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. I mean, I'm not going to get too much into yeah. it, but a lot of people are very turned away by this movie just based on the fact that, I mean, who they have as Flash Thompson. And then who reportedly, which may be false, may be true, we don't know yet, maybe MJ. I mean, she's like, all that stuff is really turning people off to the movie, which isn't going to help it with any possible fatigue going on. But it's still Spider-Man, so I'm sure it'll do well. If not here, definitely it'll do well overseas. And then Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't have much to say about Guardians of the Galaxy because it was so well recepted when it came out. I feel like it's going to have a lot of hype and it's going to have a lot of excitement. James Dunn, James Gunn, sorry, did he? James he Dunn. Dunn. <laughs> yeah, he's a beetle um, rolling his <laughs> Dunn around. <laughs> but you know, James Gunn, hopefully he doesn't listen to this because he might, he might get upset. I don't know. But James Gunn, uh, <laughs> he did a fantastic job. And the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 looks great. And I think it's going to be the financial, like financially speaking, I think it'll be the best MCU movie in 2017. However, I don't think it will do better than Justice League, financially speaking, because Justice League has what I call the Avengers factor, which is it's a huge team up event movie. And just like the Avengers, it's the first of its kind, you know, first of its kind being it's the first Justice League live action movie. That's what people were saying about Batman v Superman. Well, no, you stole my that, argument. Well, the difference is that <laughs> the difference with Batman v Superman is that a lot of people weren't that excited for it when the trailers were coming out because we got stuff like their version of Doomsday. The top and the top one percent of, of DC fans were yeah, excited. Yeah, but I mean, like the common person wasn't that hyped up for it because they didn't really like the tone and attitude they were taking with, you know, Superman and stuff like that in the trailer. And you really they, think that, that like Zack Snyder actually yeah, woke up from this yeah, weird gotta, dream that he's You gotta wait, Luke. Time. You gotta wait. Just a little longer. I'm <sighs> wrapping up. I know it's hard. All right. All um, right. All right. But basically I think that Just League it look it's so far it's appeared a lot different, you know, with the trailers and everything. It's appeared a lot different than the Batman v Superman movie. And a lot of people are excited for the Flash because a lot of people think it's Wally which is actually really funny. A lot of people don't know it's Barry because I was talking to a lot of people that are fans of the animated show, which had Wally, and they think that's the same Flash that's in the movie coming out. So (laughs) that's why earlier I mentioned a lot of people that are fans of the animated series are going to probably come out to see it because that's what they're kind of remembering. 
Because, you know, let's be honest, most people besides us, obviously, most most people don't really read the comics. They just kind of watch the cartoons when they're no, younger they and all that stuff. So that's what they're thinking. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are excited to see Aquaman because Aquaman is total badass now. But Game of Thrones is also a really, like, it's not a hipster thing, but it's, you know, it's been a very popular thing to watch. And obviously, Jason Momoa is in you know, Game it's of just Thrones. Just because he's hot. That's all. That's why they want to see it. <laughs> but, I mean, basically my point being is, like, Besides Batman and Superman, I mean, Batman obviously still gets a lot of viewers, but everyone really wants to see Justice League for that new Aquaman, for the Flash, obviously Wonder Woman. But, and I mean, I haven't really met anyone that says they want to watch Justice League for Cyborg, but I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure there's people out there. (laughs) All three of those Cyborg film fans. Yeah, but my base, I mean, like the comics, the comic sales reflect what I mean. But my basic point is, (laughs) I feel like financially speaking, Justice League is going to explode and i feel like wonder woman's also gonna have it's gonna have a decent box office debut i don't think it's gonna break any records however i think at the end of the day due to how it looks like it might be i have i have an optimistic expectation and i feel like justice league will beat all the marvel movies financially speaking wonder woman will probably be middle of the row so i feel like wonder woman will probably be in similar terms as Thor Ragnarok in regards to box office. Do you guys think that uh, living in the world that we live in now, when it comes to um, Hollywood, uh, do, do you guys really think that like early critic reception has any puts any dent on the box office? Yeah, I yeah, mean, definitely. I think I it think, does. I think it really does. So, so do you think it? So, so do you find it? Would you find it more wise for a studio to keep the embargo until opening night, or do you think it's a smart idea? To let you know, let some reviews start coming out like a month before the film. I mean, I feel I'd like say, you're very comfortable. You do the. Most I'd say maybe before. a week. I, yeah, it depends on the comfort of the director, honestly. I mean, you don't want to do it too early because people might, you know, that initial hype you're building, people it may not run off until the debut if you do it too early. Yeah, yeah. That th- it, this it was honestly, honestly just a, side a bunch note, of factors but... with it because it depends on like like how like you said how much you believe in your film but also if you hold off for too long then people are going to feel like you feel your movie is bad so they're not going to want to see it because you don't want critics to see it at that point but at the same time if you do it too early and it doesn't do that and it doesn't do that well it's going to have the same problem i also have to bring up as well just just before someone buddy bitches in the comment section there's a good reason why we didn't put logan on this list and that's because it's not a real Marvel movie. Just, <laughs> We're doing MCU just, versus DCEU, that that's Damn. why. I'm just throwing also that out. Also, it would very lopsided this list, but... Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, like, okay, uh, to, I guess just to wrap up my thoughts real quick. Um, I'm interested in seeing Wonder Woman, um, even though I, I think it's going to have a lot of problems. Um, and I am I am interested in seeing Justice League. I do think it's going to be better. I don't think it's going to make more money than Guardians. Um, and also, I'm I'm actually really upset the fact that we're not getting a founding member of the Justice League in the first Justice League film. And, and you know, like, I, I'll, I'll even say this on Marvel's part. I, I was mad when the Avengers came out because two founding members weren't in that in that original movie either. So, I mean, with, 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 with these, like, Avenger effect type of movies... Um, all of them really just tend to like screw with me a little bit when it comes to my, you know, my, my pretentious fanboy, And mm. I, I see, I see a lot of, there's a lot of doubt in the DCE right now. I really hope that they can pull their shit together with justice league, because if they don't, I think it's time for them to honestly reboot at this point, just completely start over. Anyways. Yeah. It's, it's Tim now, right? There's, there's a lot. There, well, yeah, there, there is so much to say, and honestly, like we're running out of time, so I guess everyone else can. <laughs> oh, I guess Josh doesn't mind extra editing. No, I don't. no, man, let's keep let's keep it going. Tim, what about <laughs> you? What's uh, what's your piece? No, uh, well, b- basically, with the debate portion of this, if we're talking about financials of them, typically with the MCU movies, based on the the numbers that I'm looking at with it. Most of the ones that do the best are the ones that tend to have the most characters in it, like the teams will. So Mm -hmm. Guardians will probably do well, but their individual films tend to do worse than uh, 
than any of the films that DC has put out so far, even Man of Steel, which was a solo film. So it gives you more hope towards Wonder Woman and Justice League that they'll both end up doing okay. better because just because <laughs> more people know those characters better, so they're going to see that. Do you know what? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but you know, like, like what still worries me is you have the director of Wonder Woman is is already pulling a David Ayer before the movies even come out. Dude. And that that's a red flag. The still like the same like hopeless blue filter that they have on every single DC movie for some reason is still there in Wonder Woman. Oh yeah, in World War Two. And I feel like that, that 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 movie along with Man of Steel should have been much brighter, much more saturated, full of, you know, color and Which light. it is I just when she's this, when she's I, on well, the like island. Some scenes when, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, like like those are like the most visually appealing when it like, you know, uh cinematic wise. But for the most part, I mean, you, you like so far we've just seen like um you know, some action scenes and most of them oddly enough were like in slow motion, which also concerns me. Like I don't want to get a bunch of slow motion action s- sequences. Um so I'm like Wonder Woman definitely concerns me. I'm interested in seeing it. Um when it and like when it comes to the Justice League, uh you know, like when Jeff Johns was asked what which one he's excited for, he's like, "Well, I'm excited for Wonder Woman." Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, wait a minute, you're you're supposed to be like this this big creative consultant on the DCEU now. Also, too, Jeff Johns is going back to writing comics. That's another big red flag for me. Either A, he caved under the pressure, or B, he caved under the pressure and couldn't stand well, the the Warner Brothers executives that were breathing down his well, neck Luke, the entire Luke, time. Luke, you're ignoring the biggest red flag for Wonder Woman, at least for a financial perspective. The date they picked uh, for release is June 2nd. It's gonna be murdered by everything around it before and after. Oh yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, I was, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, because al- it's Tim. We tried our best. We, t- we tried our best, Tim. <laughs> it's, it's Alien Covenant. <laughs> it's Pirates Five, Captain Underpants, The Mummy, Cars Two, Transformers: oh, The Last Night, Wonder Woman, Despicable Me, and then Spider Man comes with the killing blow a month later. Not yeah, like like a little over like two or three days. Like I think it's like thirty something days after Wonder Woman, Spider Man: Homecoming is released. Wonder Woman, I don't think has has in, like a morsel of a chance to reach I, like seven or eight hundred million. I, like I have I, hope for it from from a critical no perspective, it's... but financially, I don't think it will do well. Which is like the opposite it, for Justice League. It'll do well, but it's not going to do as well as it could yeah. if it was standing on its own. Yeah, and, and it has a lot of competition. If they in that, in if that they had dropped it in, in like April, they probably could have pulled it off. Well. Tim. Yeah, uh, Tim. Well, yeah, I did. I <laughs> agree with that Tim. point with Wonder Woman with its release date, but I think that even despite the DCU's best efforts so far, I still think Justice League is going to do well just for the sheer amount of characters in it because those agree. tend to be the superhero movies that do the best. I, my thing is, I think, I think in terms of like money, I think Justice League will come up number two. I just have this feeling that Spider Man's going to top it. Just based off of financial history, they make good money. Even if people are apprehensive about it, they want to see if they're right or wrong. And plus now, since Marvel's just, trying to pull their diversity card, and you see like people of color showing up in the movie, that's going to make all all us Tumblr kids going to be like, ooh, look, that looks interesting. And the adult- Black Panther? To be fair, though, most <laughs> of the people that say that don't usually don't end up going to see it most of the time. They just Yeah, I mean, they're the same people that torn it, it and everything. <laughs> We share gifts. Yeah, the whole movie. The whole movie will be gifted by a J- July eighth. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna bring up my fu- my my final thought. I I I think Jeff Johns really wants this to work more than anybody in the industry right now. He has a, he has a burning passion for DC Comics, and he has a burning passion for these films, and he doesn't want to see them fail. Yeah. But again. Though the, I don't know why no one's talking about this because honestly it freaks me out when Jeff Johns, who's supposed to be their kind of stand-in Kevin Feige right now, you know I and like he was so heavily involved with Justice League that he had to be on set every day. I don't know if he had to be, but he was. He was there on set most of the days, making sure everything worked like it should be. He 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 was that involved with the film, and then for him to like come out and say. Well, I'm 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 excited for Wonder Woman. Like, like what what what's going on behind the scenes? Executive like, like, meddling. Did you, 
not yeah did but you not in fairness get along to that kevin feige is a he's a businessman and jeff johns is a creator they don't have the same exact position no, that's as very one true another. that's true that's that's very true and I, I, again he's a he's acting kind of like a stand-in kevin feige that doesn't mean he is or has the knowledge or experiences that kevin feige does because he definitely doesn't but he is a great creator he he's a wonderful writer and I think, honestly, if anyone deserves a position like that, it should be Jeff Johns. But he's going back to writing comics. And, you know, like, going forward, after Suicide Squad, I'm like, okay, Wonder Woman is going to be the first film that's under Jeff Johns' creative control. Mm-hmm. Like, like, that gave me some hope. Like, gave me some hope. But it looks like he's not going to be that involved anymore. I guess only time will tell. Maybe he'll get back into it. Maybe he's done forever. And, and the thing is, I, I do want the DCEU to succeed. I want to see them me too. get a win. Because despite me being mildly entertained by Suicide Squad, I admit that it has a shitload of issues. And David Ayer is really talented. I watched Training Day recently. I'm like, okay, you can write a good movie. What happened? <laughs> like, Suicide Squad should yeah, have been yeah, exactly yeah. like, uh, what's the movie he did with uh, Brad Pitt? and Shia LaBeouf. Fury. Oh, Literally, yeah, Fury. Fury has a plot line of Suicide Squad. Like, when you really think about it, it has a very, like, Here, similar, like, like things thing, that dude. happen Suicide in it would have worked for Suicide Squad. Like, the cast Disney. wasn't bad. Suicide Squad w- was written in six weeks. Oh, yeah, that's why. Uh, the, the, the movie that we got was not the movie that David Ayer directed or written. Um, it was It was something else entirely, and... That speaks volumes. You know, David Ayer won't really talk about it publicly, but we know from multiple sources that that was what was going on. Um, You you know, like even David Ayer was hitting the panic button. You're already seeing some of that come out with Patty Jenkins. Like, I am concerned. I am very concerned. You know, so far you've had three swings up to bat and you've you've missed all of your home runs. You've had three chances so far to do it and you've missed it completely. Like missed yeah, I mean, from 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 production to writing to acting to plot lines, you guys have struck it, out. I don't, I don't. You've had three. No, I like again. There, there's two movies coming out. You know, the, the, uh, for DC in this this year. Let's hope to God they are at least decent yeah. and they are not garbage like what we've gotten before. And I, I don't, I'm actually saying that like Man of Steel's complete garbage. I enjoyed the film. And I hate it a lot less than what I used to. Uh, Comparatively. I, 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 I tend to be more forgiving of that film more than anything, uh, honestly. But um, it's watchable, and I enjoy D- watching it. DC fans honestly. deserve better movies. Granted, Marvel fans do too. We've had a lot more time, and we've had a lot more things we at least enjoy. We, no. All right, all right, Marvelite yeah. people. I'm going to have to cut you guys off now, <laughs> because this is not an Damn episode it. of Marvelite special hate bashing dc i'm not hate bashing um, i'm saying you guys deserve you nice things gosh. i want you I'm guys gonna, to win i'm gonna give it, it was I'm our duty give, it was our duty to defend all right so Marvel, i'm gonna give each of you guys well that's what i'm gonna get to in a second so i'm gonna give each of you guys a minute tim i'll give two minutes because tim hasn't talked that much but <laughs> sorry I'll, tim. Give, I'll give luke and will one minute each i'll time in everything to say like their final thoughts because currently the DC side is winning. Now, the reason why we're winning is because we're the only side that has actually said why Warner Brothers could have the better year versus Marvel. That's you true. guys have just been bashing DC movies the whole time. I didn't bash DC. <laughs> okay, Luke's okay. been bashing DC okay. the whole time. So Con- Confession time, I bashed the shit out of DC. You did. <laughs> and I, finally, I was just like, you know what? Let me tell him, like that, Luke ruined like, the cause. Like in regards to the rules of the debate, you haven't, you didn't win the debate. Um. So here, I'll give you, I'll give oh you a God. minute, and I'll give Will a minute to uh consolidate your thoughts in the confines of the debate, and I'll give Tim. I'm two, done. Are talking. you done? All right. So he uh, all right. gives he up his minute. Will you have I... one minute starting in three, two, one, go. All right for me. Yeah, you're already at three seconds. All right, cool. So basically, just to surmise my point, (coughs) the MCU has had success in the past. Uh, It's reliable. And this will be its best year because they have Spider-Man back. Spider-Man has a new film. They have a sequel draw-in from Guardians of the Galaxy alone, which builds a massive amount of hype. 
And from the first one that was financially and critically successful, that's a benefit to them. Spider-Man, people love Spider-Man. It'd at least be a financial success. Critical is up for debate. And Thor, that has a lot of hype to it. So that will probably at least be critical and probably financial if it's dropping in November because no one really drops films unless it's Oscar bait season. So just from a financial perspective, they have all three. From a critical, they have at least two with the possibility of three. The weakness with DC is that people have been burned in the past. That's going to be their biggest detractor. And a lot of financial hubbub and issues in the past with just having their ship run. That's just not reflecting them on them well. We right, just done. had Your more strikes. Over. That's it. It's over. Tim, you have two minutes. Or up okay. to two minutes, guys. You don't have to use all two minutes. And all starts right, now. Fine. All right. So basically, with, with DC, like you said, they haven't been critical darlings. They've been mixed at best. Like Even their highest rated film on Rotten Tomatoes is still certified rotten. But despite all that, despite mi- mixed reception, despite people feeling burned, they still make a ton of money. Like maybe not as much as they want them to, but it still makes a lot more than Marvel <sighs> was starting out. But based partially off of the pre-existing characters that people know, and Marvel already having a stake in the industry with it. Plus, with this new competition of people feeling like everyone is against. DC like online that more people are willing to go who find enjoyment in it and pay multiple times to go see it to prove people wrong in some way. So oh my god. So even if it's not like it's arguable if these will be critical successes, they may be they may not be only time will tell. There's no evidence backing that from the rest of the DCEU, but financially nope. they always make a good amount back. I mean Suicide Squad did better than Doctor Strange last year, and Batman vs Superman was in the top five up in, in worldwide up until like a few months ago. Here's the Wait, problem, Tim. You have that. forty seconds left. Do you want to use that forty seconds, or do you want to? Give do you want to me. give forty <laughs> seconds to Luke? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you want to share yeah. that power? <laughs> See, he, he, we. So by basically my point is that we don't know whether or not they'll do well critically, especially since, like, we've said before in the past on Super Friends that we think Suicide Squad got sort of, like, the raw end of the deal coming off of Batman vs. Superman that we don't think it deserved the score that it got. We don't think it's no, great, it but didn't. we think that there was bias against it because of the previous films critically, which might lead into these two films as well, but financially I think it'll still do better. Okay, so you have five seconds left okay. if you want to use that. Yeah, just let it run out. Oh, that, <laughs> I'll just say that was your five seconds. Wait, I, I, have, I have five seconds of okay. something to say. I will say, yeah, Tim, you're right. They, they make a lot of money, but I feel like with Batman v Superman, Warner Brothers really hit the panic button and they said, shit, uh, what do we do? Uh, I don't know. Let's just hurry up and just uh churn these movies out uh who cares if they're good they make a lot of freaking money and that's what i feel like they're doing it's like let, let's just not really focus on what the director wants or or what the writers want or anything like that let's just have them churn something out in six fucking weeks and uh, make, make a blockbuster make Damn. a lot of money i feel like that's literally what they did they just hit the panic button and said make money make money make money which, make money we gotta catch up with marvel we gotta catch up with marvel we gotta catch up with marvel Batman probably. <laughs> he sounds very like like Luke. He's only he was very personal. Like like a DC character, probably Jared Leto's Joker, really like upsets you. Oh my god, you have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, at least with Suicide Squad, I didn't actually physically try to get up out of my seat in the theater <laughs> like I did with Batman v Superman. Like you did believe, that one panel. I did that. Believe, Luke. Well, we're, we're <laughs> gonna, just believe. Well, we're, we're going to cut that kind of conversation short because it's just asking for uh, for people to get upset in the comments because we're, at this point, we'd just be openly bashing Oh my god. DC. <laughs> Even though it's funny, we had a Marvel comment. Someone said for the Marvel lights, like, oh, like I listened to like like <laughs> Marvel related podcast. People are people are gonna send me death guys. threats. But I listen People are gonna yeah, send me death says, threats. Uh, it's like, gonna be great. They say they're a huge Marvel fan, but they say listen to the Marvel light when they <laughs> when they want to be depressed. Hey look someone's gonna I mean, 
I so mean, I, I believe that Wonder Jay Woman will have a good reception. Me. I just don't know about financially. It, it might be fucked. I mean, ever... financially, it'll probably have an issue just because of timing. Here, I mean, yeah, just because of timing. I feel the need to defend. I mean, it's kind of sad because it's like the tail end of the podcast. And usually people at this point have left if we upset them. But uh, I'm gonna, I feel the urge to defend DC somewhat if possible. So... For the Wonder Woman movie, like, to rebut some things that have been said about DC movies coming out. Um, now, in regards to Jeff Johns doing his thing, I mean, if there was a time to write a comic now and all that stuff, it would be now. Because Justice League and all that stuff is already finished filming. It's in post-production. Same thing with Wonder Woman. They've finished filming post-production. So there's not much left that Jeff Johns can do without actually being the director of the movie. So what's the next movie slated to come out? After I don't know. It's on my head. The f- but basically, uh, Gotham City Sirens Flash, or the technically, Batman? Technically, but it they haven't changed the date yet. Yeah, but my my basic wait wait what wait it's... what's the next movie? Aqua no, that was Gotham City it's, Sirens. It's Gotham City the Sirens because Gotham City Sirens took the Flash's release date. Yeah. Oh, it did. I thought Flash. Oh yeah, so it. great. Okay. Yeah, that that that's another thing too. Yeah. The Flash anyways, my back. point. Well, they lost their director. They did. Yeah, I mean, you can't. But anyways, <laughs> twice. My, Twice over creative differences. Oh my point being, though, is... Just, uh, I'm just saying. Just I know, saying. but my point being is that, I mean, we can't forget that unlike Kevin Feige, Jeff John started writing comics. That's his love. That's his passion. So I feel yep, like absolutely. as much as you can say, it's like, oh, it's a bad thing that he's going back to writing comics. Granted, he's writing, you know a comic that's very integral to the DC Comics, you know, Rebirth storyline. So that's one thing. But, I mean, we didn't complain when he wrote the Rebirth issue, also. And that was when this movie stuff was actually, you know, in the middle of production and all that stuff. Like, they actually wrapped production now. They're in po- Well, they're in post-production. But, I mean, at the time, they were actively filming and all that stuff. And we weren't complaining. So I feel like this is less of a scenario where Jeff Johns, you know, like, we should be warned, and it's more of a scenario where, I mean, he's just going back to doing what he loves, which is writing comics while probably he has some time to do so before he has to start, you know, working on the production more so on the next upcoming slate of movies. And then also, I feel, you know, in regards to the whole color on the Wonder Woman movie thing, I mean, Themyscira looking very colorful is nice, but I can't. For a movie like Wonder Woman and what they're going for, at least, I can't fault them too much for muting the colors during the battle, you know, during the World War II. During scenes. World War One, that's because fine. It's, the sky yeah, was ash. It's during World War <laughs> One, So, I mean, just disregarding, you know, equipment and all that stuff, like kind of like the guns and everything kind of polluting the air with smoke and, you know, fires and all that stuff from, you know, things being probably lit on fire and just destroyed in general and bombs and stuff. I mean... It kind of helps convey that, that kind of gritty war feeling, because what, like, tell yeah, me, yeah, that's fair. Like, they might be trying to lightly convey a war movie kind of vibe with that, and I can't fault them for that, honestly. Like, I really cannot, you know, fault them for that in this scenario. I mean, granted, for like a Superman movie, I would. For Man of Steel, like we all did, I also would. But for Wonder <sighs> Woman being in Here's an actual thing. war, I can't, I can't harp on it too much. I, uh, I agree with you. Here's the thing. I feel like Wonder Woman is a prequel to a reference we got that she said. I mean, technically to Bruce it Wayne. is, but technically it was a you, photograph. You could argue it, Captain it America is. was the exact same way because it was. We it was. But yeah, I'm not. Howard I'm not going to fault. And Tony Stark didn't really have that much of a interaction beforehand, but then all of a sudden, you know, through the Iron Man movies, we learned that. Tony's father worked with the Super Soldier program, and all of a sudden we learned that, you know, the whole he had Cap Shield thing and all that stuff. So it's like that kind of forced yeah. in uh, a, a interaction or relationship between Howard Stark and Captain America. You know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of like the same thing. Like that was a prequel, more or less storyline partial, not storyline, but I mean. A lot of elements of it with the character interactions was very based on those brief, you know, kind of cameos, you know, in the same vein that the Wonder Woman movie interaction wise is be is going to be heavily influenced by that cameo from Batman mm-hmm. v Superman, like with the photo and but stuff. Comic like, book I mean, movies in general could stand to use color, though. But I mean, also at the same time, you can't harp too much on, you know, that photo thing, because I mean, 
we already knew probably in a Wonder Woman solo film it would have Steve Trevor. That's practically a given. And Wonder Woman oddly isn't the problem I have at all when we're talking about like the DCEU. That's honestly like well, we, the non Remember, we're talking in regards to the 2017 movies. So even still, that's the one I I want I think will do critically. I think it'll do better than Justice League, I'm being honest. Really? Oh, I think critically it'll do better than Justice League, but I think financially I think critically Justice financially be Justice League will sweep yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But critically I think Wonder Woman will yeah. be better. Yeah, I I I agree with that. I mean, mm, it's it's interesting because, I mean, for me, for Justice League, what I'm most critically going to harp on probably after I watch the movie is how they balance the tone of each character. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like, how the characters bounce off each other. I mean, it's quite obvious the characters that are going to have the, the most bounce off is going to be Flash and Batman, most likely. Because I can see it now, Batman is going to be very, you know formal with how he approaches things he's going to be very like thorough he's going to want to plan very ahead and they're probably going to they're probably going to want to keep you know wally west kind of vibe with flash and they're going to want you know flash to be more of the oh like i have like super add or oh i just want to run you know head first in this stuff and that kind of thing the opposite basically of batman so i can see a scene where batman's like about to go over something like a plan of attack, so to speak, and Flash just already heads off. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I can see which it. they did in yeah. Young Justice too with Robin. You know, Robin was about to come up with a plan, and then Kid Flash was that Young Justice? I think it was. And Kid Flash, I'm pretty sure it was. Well, no, either that or Teen, not Teen Titans. No, I, that was actually Justice League. But I think that was with that was with Flash and Batman because Young Justice, like all of them, like split up and just left. Actually, no, never mind. That was with Impulse. Yeah, Young Justice did do that with Impulse instead of Kid Flash. That's The only thing is, like, since Justice League is a series, it's a lot easier to establish that because you have a lot more time to do it with. And the thing is, Justice League has to basically summarize this character we saw for two, a total of a minute between two films. Yeah, I mean, I just... I, I mean, me personally, I wish they didn't have that cameo in Suicide Squad because Same. it seems very forced. In there, it, it looked kind of like it looked kind of weird. It was obvious that it was filmed, not on set. You know, like the Ezra Miller part. Yeah. But I mean, like Tim, what what are you thinking? I got to make sure I keep Tim involved because if I don't, if yeah. Tim doesn't say at least <laughs> one still word here. every like five minutes, he I feel like he might Speak disappear up, into the speed Tim. force. Just just peep in, bro. Jump in. We're gonna jump you in. <laughs> so, no, I guess if we're still t- if we're talking about the DC side on this, I. Ca- I kind of agree that Wonder Woman may end up doing better critically. Honestly, I don't know. I, as I've said before, I've never been sold on any of the trailers so far on Super Friends, so I can't say that I have the most hype for the movie. Uh, but I still think DC will do fine this year. Uh, but we talked about this on Super Friends uh, this week, or whenever this video, this podcast goes out. Uh that I wasn't sure what either Wonder Woman or Justice League really had to be to succeed, and I don't really know what I want out of either movie, to be perfectly honest at this point. That I just kind of want to be entertained by either of them. Like, that was my biggest problem with Man of Steel, that I just kind of find it boring. Okay. Yeah. Like, I've never been, like, that upset with any DC film. Like, I've never been angry. I was actually just, angry. Ha- I haven't liked it, I moved I mean, on. But I have to keep talking about it because I'm on Super Friends. All right, <laughs> <laughs> pizza. Tim. I mean, I was actually genuinely upset after Batman v Superman. Uh, when I watched it, I remember watching it with CJ next to me in theaters. Luckily, we were in a reclining chair seat at the theater we were at. So I was comfortable, but I was comfortably upset. I mean, I was also hungry. <laughs> so I was like, I was hangry. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was yeah, watching this movie. That didn't help. And I was hangry. And I was comfortable, but I was still very hangry. And it was just one of those <coughs> things I saw, where I was, well, I was angry not me. only from, and at the time I was fresh out of like a like you know this like media like this film studies class I taken too and everything like that. So I was angry from like a critical like just film critique standpoint for like a lot of things. You know what I mean? Um, with like pacing mm-hmm. and like certain cuts they used. And actually, I was actually a little angry at like certain like, well, I can go on a whole tangent about the cuts, but I mean, like, I was also angry about like a frame they used for like certain scenes and all that stuff. And then I set that aside. I'm angry as a viewer. Because of what we got. 
and the fact that it was nothing like I was hoping it would be. You know what I mean? Which is also like a pro and con of having expectations for a movie. So I was angry from a mm-hmm. film critique standpoint. I was angry from a viewer standpoint. But then I was angry from a comic book fan standpoint because I know what these characters are actually supposed to be like. And I yeah. know in regards to adapting them on a live you know, action format, this was a horribly, horribly done version of that. So I was angry yeah, when, in three ways. I was a yeah. I was an angry living tribunal. <laughs> That's what I was. Yeah, when it and when it when it comes to CBMs, I, it, it just occurred to me. The issue with Marvel for their fans is that they do. When it comes to adaptations for characters, their stuff is more generic, and when it comes to DC, their stuff is super specific. That's why there's a there's a very specific type of DC fan that comes out to defend the DCEU. I'm sorry, it just Andre? it's just true. <laughs> oh my god but there's dude. also oh my god. there's Our also mouse. <laughs> it's yeah that's why and that's why it's easier to defend remember no. Bulla Man? <laughs> who's that and that's why when when marvel fan, fans don't have to defend it but they have to talk about why they're pissed it's a different type of anger dc fans are trying to like protect what they like about these characters but it's very specific things Marvel fans have to be like, they need to be more specific. Well, Marvel also... Like, these are things they need to fix. Marvel also attained what I call a legendary status. And by that, I mean, there's certain, like, for sports, right? There's certain players someone will always defend, and there's certain players that will always be on, like, a top five list. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, for football, you'll probably always have Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, you know, Randy Moss, Jerry Rice, you know, those, like, you know, Bo Jackson, so to speak. Like, those people will probably always be on, like, your top list, right? And, mm-hmm. like, Steve Young, all of them. And then for, like, baseball, you'll always have, you know, Babe Ruth, Barry Bonds, you know, like, those players also. And then for soccer, most people these days will probably have Lionel Messi on there. Um, I'm not a big soccer fan, so that's why I'm not listening to, like, a bunch of soccer people. But you basically – like, you basically – you, you get my point. Like, they're – yeah, it's a combination of being not only the first at your like your craft. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. a lot of those people were playing the sport when it was just getting popular, kind of. But they were also mm-hmm. the first to do a lot of things. Like they were the first to break a lot of records, to make a lot of records, to really yep. set the trend. Like you ask a lot of receivers who they look up to in football or American football, at least they'll say a lot of them will say they look up to like people like Jerry Rice. Or you ask, you know, basketball players who they like looked up to. A lot of them these days might say Kobe. Uh, if they're a center, they'll say Shaq. You know what I mean? Like they'll say, you know, Michael Jordan. Obviously, some will, might even say LeBron James. But those players are in a sort of legendary status because they kind of set the trend and they kind of set the line that everyone else follows. You know what I mean? So yeah. to quote Man of Steel, kind of, it's like they will follow you in the sun. Well, who made the sun that you're trying to follow? Well, in this movie instance, Marvel did. Because they're the ones who, they didn't make the shared universe. They weren't the first ones to do it. But they were the first ones to at least do it in a way that it became an extremely successful multi-billion dollar franchise. That everyone else wants to follow. (laughs) They were the first to pimp that shit out. Yeah, exactly. Because like... They were the first to make it rain. Obviously, you're the Freddy Jason shared universe technically. And you have the Alien vs. Predator shared franchise, technically. You know what I mean? So it's like they weren't the first ones to do it by yeah. any means. Hell, the, the original Universal Monsters from like the 40s. Yeah, yeah they yeah, did that like, a while ago in the yeah. 30s. Yeah, that's what I'm 40s. saying. So like they weren't the first to do it, but Marvel was the first ones to really do it in a way where they set the trend. You know what I mean? Like they set that line, that bar that you want to meet. Um, just like... Yeah, the the yeah. MCU set, like set what every one every studio in Hollywood wants to do to make money, make cinematic universes. Like Nick just posted like a picture in our chat of like the Alien cinematic universe of like yep. this huge elaborate timeline of movies they have planned out for Alien over the next five years. And that's not even counting AVP and the mistake that was AVPR. Yeah. yeah, but that's. Do you guys have anything else to say? We pretty much finish our discussion. Oh my god, we, we went did. So I can't far off track. I just, can't wait to edit this, guys. I just, imagine if Nick I just want Imagine D- if Nick I just was want editing DC this, to get a W. All of you. I, <laughs> oh I just god. want DC to get a W and I think that W might be Wonder Woman. Well, I think we got the she has I think it we twice. got the W. She's I think got, we got two the of W them. in exactly. the debate today. 
I'm not saying that because I was on DC's side, but I, I am saying that because I'm on DC's side. I for, Hey, you I guys, you guys have a challenge to defend out. it. Like, Yes, you did. Uh, I enjoyed Suicide Squad when it came I out. I tried forgetting it came out. I was fine with it. I was highly entertained My by that. My friend actually dumpster fact, truck actually film. CJ's brother. I was hanging out with him the other day, and he had never seen Suicide Squad, and he was like, "Yo, let's watch it." And I was like, very much like, "No, no." I convinced him to do all of his laundry instead. <laughs> nah, dude. Nah, dude. When Suicide Squad gets to the bargain bin, I am picking it up. Why? Because that movie entertained you could get, me. Like, Man of Steel out of the bargain bin. You could get. You could, Man of Steel you didn't entertain me. Nineties Captain America with the Italian Red School on the bargain bin. I would. Pick, oh God! Don't oh, remind me of uh, the Psych Hitler. I picked up Suicide the, Squad. Dude, a Suicide. I'm sorry. Hey, Suicide Squad entertained me. You don't. I walked out of Man, I walked out of uh, my college when they were showing Man of Steel. Just like, well, that was a film that happened. That was. Fun. I enjoyed. Man I of walked Steel. out of BVS. I walked out of BVS like slightly perturbed, but it was also like two in the morning and we just sat in a packed theater watching Lex Landis yell about Jolly Ranchers and pissing jars well, and shit. You know what's interesting? I actually really enjoyed the, well, I didn't really enjoy, but I enjoyed, well, I guess I really enjoyed in comparison to how I felt before, but still just, I enjoyed, uh, the Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition. I like that a whole lot better than the theatrical cut. I've heard, I, I've heard but, it's better. I still would not go but. out of my way and just like I mean, but see, I've gone, I've kind of gotten to that point with a lot of movies you're because not, well, not the debate's not. over now, so I can say whatever the fuck I want, and I can edit this part <laughs> out too, so like it's not too big of a deal. But that's true. Um, He's just gonna not put in Luke's yeah. audio <laughs> on this video. <laughs> you watch the episode; it's like oh, only thirty minutes. Why is it only thirty minutes? It's just Josh and Tim talking. <laughs> well, it's, it's basically it's basically just Josh talking with Tim doing ad libs. I think we can keep Will in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, no, we'll stay in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm actually currently thinking about how I'm gonna edit this because. I'm curious if I want to split into two parts just for this episode because of how long it is um, and upload it as two parts or if I just want to keep it as one really long part. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what gets left off on the cutting uh, table. I'll definitely upload the whole audio on SoundCloud for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. We, we are exactly. So right now. I'll probably I'll edit <laughs> the shit out of this probably. But I'll leave the whole audio on SoundCloud. Yeah, For so anyone who wants to listen us, to our insane us, ramblings. Yeah, just let us know what you thought. What do you think's gonna do better? Model yeah, DC. yeah. T- tell what us who you, you think, think won. Debate. My my money's on Marvel. No, fuck the debate. I don't <laughs> care who won. Marvel One day people will care about who won the debate. One day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> but but drop it down in the comment section who do you think won today's episode there's gonna be so many people like there's gonna be so many like all of you super friend cronies that go in there in the comments every week i i guarantee you same people talking shit now <laughs> on super friends are gonna come in and just defend the fuck well you know it's you know and, the, and the thing is they're gonna say why would they defend the me sake. i'm on super friends they're gonna ba- they're gonna say we bashed because, dc the whole time you, i didn't that was you <laughs> Because it's because you guys are defending. Well, all right. DC how about right this? Now. So I I was thinking about so for the winners, right? I feel like the winning team instead of getting a trophy, you just say we gave you the D. So so who gave who the D? <laughs> yeah. Did Josh master debate <laughs> all over Will and Luke? <laughs> Big six foot gigantic ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. This Leave us I'm alone. Ending, this is how I'm ending the podcast. By DC, way. Marvel, Marvel just tends to churn out movies because they're a machine, and DC churns out movies because they it's need so to catch deep, up man. Excalibur. WB <laughs> needs a new franchise. This is so long. WB doesn't need Zack Snyder anymore. It needs I more crosses. <laughs> All right, needs so who masturbated who? And who gave the D to who? Comment below. Let us know. This is Josh. Tim. And Lucal. And the this Will. This is Marvel Will. 
Marvel Will. Was it, it was Marvel Will, but I saw a little of DC Will in there. Maybe we'll get him out soon. But, yeah, welcome back to the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to...